Welcome to Couve.com. I'm your host, David Medor. We've got a guest with us today, Jim Malinowski. Jim is running for PUD commissioner, this public utility district, which basically provides the electrical power for our area and beyond our area. Uh, for uh, District 1, uh, you're challenging, or actually you're running, or you're not running mate, your, your opponent here would be Julie Anderson, and we've invited both uh, people running for that position uh, to be able to come in and talk directly to the voters. Welcome, Jim. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to, t to speak to you. Um, the, probably the most useful thing would be for people to understand what does a person in this position do? What is the main role of this? Well, the PUD uh, of Clark County is owned by the citizens of Clark County. The PUD commissioners represent the citizens. Uh, they set policy for the, for the staff. Uh, they, uh, evaluate, they hire the general manager, uh, evaluate the general manager performance, mm -hmm. and they approve all major expenditures, and they set the rates for the utility. Okay, and probably the one that's more um, of interest to normal citizens out there, um, me being one of them, you too, is uh, what are those rates and, and how reliable is that power going to be? Is there other, other b more important parameters than that? Uh, the Clark PUD does a pretty good job on reliability. We have high, high ratings uh, uh, compared to nationally uh, on reliability. Mm -hmm. uh, our rates are among the highest in the region. They're low relative nationally, but in the region they're high. They're mm -hmm. among the highest in the, in the state. Oh, is that right? And they're that? actually uh, somewhat higher than a couple of the private utilities. I guess the, the third category that I didn't mention is the environmental. We want to make sure that we're good stewards, that the process of us generating power doesn't really uh, somehow damage the environment. So I'm, 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 I'm sure that's how you knew this as well, Jim. Uh, how big is the district? How, uh, how big is countywide? Oh, so it's, it's exactly the Clark the, County? It, yes. Okay. And how many positions are there in the county? Three. Okay, so there's three count, uh, PUD commissioners, like right. there's three county commissioners. And they have six-year <coughs> terms, so every two years one commissioner is up for election. Okay. And the, uh, when it comes to the resources that you are steward over, what do they include? Well, about 60% of the power comes from Bonneville Power Administration, which is very economic power. Okay. And about uh, 40, 35, 40% comes from the River Road Generating Plant, which is a natural gas-fired uh, generating plant. And then there are, per, there are small market purchases uh, on the, uh, the daily market uh, to, uh, to cover some of their uh, shortfalls and they also sell into the market. So the 60% comes from Bonneville Power, which yes. is basically the dams that along the Columbia River. Yes. I, uh, I don't know a whole lot about this, Jim, so um, that has the advantage that probably okay. most people out there don't, so I can ask the questions that, uh, ask the questions that maybe we can all get educated. Uh, I would think that those dams have been in, since the dams have been in place for many years, that they, they have been paid for. There's no, no debt on those dams. You're not burning any fuel to generate that power. You're, you're basically using nature, renewable energy, although it's not defined that way. Why would, where's the cost come from? Uh, some of the costs, are, we're still paying off the cost for the WHOOPS nuclear plants. Uh, they also are spending about $800 million a year on salmon recovery uh, 800 efforts. $800 million a year. Bonneville is, yes. And they have expenditures on transmission. They, they, they own the, Bonneville does not own generation. They market power from the federal dams, but they, all, they own about two-thirds of the transmission in the Northwest. And so there are, there are costs associated with, with uh, building and maintaining that transmission system. Uh, there are costs, staff costs associated with managing the generation. And so that's where some of the costs come in. But you're, uh, you're right. If once those whoops uh, uh, bill, uh, bills are paid off, uh, Bonneville's costs will should go down. Well, a couple. Of, uh, what is the total budget for an annual budget for, for uh, this the PUD? It's a it's a little over three hundred uh, million a year. Three hundred million. How could it be three hundred million if if eight hundred million is for? Well, that's Center. for Bonne that, that's <coughs> that's Bonneville power costs, not not the PUD costs. Eight hundred million is what Bonneville power spends annually 
on mitigation for uh, effects on salmon. In other words, that cost is shared by other all, entities? All of the customers of Bonneville, yes. Do you know what Bonneville's total budget is? If, if that $800 million is for salmon recovery, how much no, are... No, I, I don't know that number. Okay. Uh, that seems like a lot of, like a big number. What are they doing with the $800 million a year? Uh, various uh, habitat projects up and down the main stem of the Columbia. Uh, I really think it's, uh, it's wasted money. I don't, I really... You know, I belong to a group called the uh, Fish First, and I also am a member of Con Coastal Conservation Association. Mm -hmm. We believe the real problem with salmon is overharvest, and that uh, the dams and, and uh, habitat and hatcheries, which are blamed for the problem, are really a small part of the problem. The big problem, you can't continue killing the, too many of these fish and expect them to thrive. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we think there are better things they could be doing with that 800 million than than some of these habitat projects. Uh, the, well that, that's, uh, I, I'm curious, on the Bonneville, does that, the Bonneville, is that just simply the dams on the Columbia River or is, it, or is Bonneville bigger than that? No, they, they <coughs> well, again, Bonneville is a marketing agent for the federal dams. They're dams uh, operated by the Corps of Engineers and by the Bureau of Reclamation. And Bonneville is a marketing agent for those organizations. They don't, Bonneville does not own or operate those facilities. They control them, but they don't own and operate. It, it's a federal agency. Yes. And does it inc include <coughs> resources? <coughs> excuse me. Beyond the Columbia River? No. So it's just the Columbia River. Uh, yes. Do we have eight hundred million dollars worth of salmon going up and down there? I mean, I. I yeah, the interesting thing is the total. The, uh, I've been told the total <coughs> economic value of the com commercial catch on the Columbia River is about two million dollars. Uh, Bonneville could buy out all the commercial uh, licenses for much less than that 800 million. I'm puzzled. <laughs> How in the world could you spend, it's not just like capital investment where you do it once, 800 million every year they're yes. spending for two million dollars worth That's of... That's my understanding. Salmon. Do you have any say in that? Uh, not really. Uh, I mean, you can you you can speak out on it, but we but the PUD doesn't have any control over that that those numbers. Who uh, does? Congress and <laughs> Congress really uh, in the uh, long run. Wow. Okay. Well, I want to make sure people. I don't lead people to believe that. Well, hey, the salmon. If you get rid of them, they're not worth it. I don't <laughs> want want to lead people to believe that. But there are efficiencies and there are smart ways of protecting fish yes. and certainly we want to be able to do that but the throwing money at it isn't necessarily the optimal way to be able to do that. Uh, the uh, Why do we have 60 percent from BPA when you got all that power and well, why do we have why did we build a natural gas? Well that's one of the reasons I got generator. interested in the PUD was uh, when I moved up here in 1993 moved back home I found out that they were considering going off BPA for all but 1% of their power. All my training and background said that's a stupid idea. And there were a lot of, of engineers in the region that testified against it. And uh, what happened was that uh, they entered into, they built the river road plant. Who's they? The PUD. The PUD The board, commissioners. The commissioners made the decision to go off BPA for all but 1% of their power. Um, build the river road generating plants, which is a natural gas-fired plant, and enter into uh, five-year contracts with Pacific Core and what was then Washington Water Power, now Avista. And uh, it just turned out that uh, in 2000, when we had the energy crisis and market prices went up sky high, uh, those contracts expired. And uh, the PUD wanted back on BPA for the share of the, share of their load that wasn't covered by River Road. and uh, River Road being the gas-fired plant? Yes. And um, the, uh, there was about a two-month gap, and they, they ended <coughs> up spending about $100 million with a budget of $300 million on purchase power for that two-month period. Uh, we just finished... For two months, they spent $100 million? Yes. And they, we just sp they, and they, they, uh, per they got bonds to cover that because you couldn't cover it with rates. In other so words, we, they borrowed long-term debt in order to cover that. To pay that, that two, operating cost. Two months worth of power. Yes. Are we still paying on that debt? Well, we just pay, they just paid it off this year. 
at any rate, the, um, they did get back for about 60% and uh, we were lucky we got back. But is, that, is that high enough? I mean, should we, why? Well, we'd, you know, it, we would be a lot better off if we were back at 100% like we were. Why, Jim, why in the world would we take power that's being generated without consuming any fuel from, a, from facilities that are already built, that are already paid for, right? Mm -hmm. And say, well, we're going to build brand new plants that are going to take debt to build them and burn fuels in order to generate the same power that was already available basically for... You, you'd have to ask the commissioners that made that decision because there were a lot, a number of us that testified that it was a bad decision. They must have had a reason. I mean, they must have they, conveyed, they, what was I, that? My, my impression was, uh, and Commissioner Curtis made a comment, they wanted to be players in this new regulated, deregulated market. Sounds like the pre-Enron right. world. Yes. And basically the long, if you look back at history, it sounds like that ended up costing taxpayers a whole lot of money. Certainly and cost the ratepayers. We, we had out. a, before that decision was made, our rates were among the lowest in the region, and now our rates are among the highest. Because of debt service? Well, yeah, or no, no, because of 40% coming from. The River Road plant uh, right now is, is over double the cost of Bonneville power. And it's been as high as three times Bonneville's. Is it within, your scope, your, uh, the commissioner's ability to change that ratio and say, can, what, can we move from no. burning fuel back to hydropower? Unfortunately, we can't. It's uh, because the problem is it's a, it's a little a zero sum game in that uh, BPA in a normal and a dry year has no excess energy available. So if they gave it back to us, they'd have to take it from someone else. They're selling it on the open market. Well, they don't, they don't sell on the open market unless uh, the uh, region uh, is fully, all the region needs are fully satisfied. So who makes that call as to, I mean, why, why, who's the authority that says you can't do that? We can't move back from 60 to 100. Well, it's Bonneville Power has got a constituency of other utilities that also want that cheap hydropower. And uh, so you, you would have the other, the agencies that would lose access will fight tooth and nail to hang on to what they have. So even though these resources are in our own backyard, we're selling 40% of it to others at a lower rate and we're not well, cashing But out. there are others in the region. Well, there's a regional preference law that says that, that all of the uh, power has to be offered to, the, uh, to region entities before it can be sold out of the region. Um, so, uh, uh, and one of the things that, that Clark can do and, had, and has done this year is they can shut the river when there's uh, excess hydro like we've had this year. They, they actually shut the river road plant down until last month and, and purchased power from Bonneville because there was extra, extra hydropower available. So if, uh, so if it becomes available, then, it, then we, can, yes. we have in something in place that says, we'll take whatever you can produce. Yes. yes. The unfortunate part of that, though, is Generally, they've they've purchased gas for the plant, and now th this last year they purchased gas at about six dollars a million BTU. The market price right now is about three dollars a million BTU. So they they had to sell that gas off at a loss in order to take the uh, the hydropower from Bonneville. Now that still was a was a good economic decision because we save money, but uh, it's it's not. Uh, there, there are costs to, to make that shift to economy energy because of those long, ter those uh, forward uh, natural gas mark prices. So that story that unfolded that ended up costing all the ratepayers here uh, unfolded because of at least a majority of three people in Clark County made the decision that says, ah, let's move away from free, or not free, for low cost renewable hydropower and let's build something. So the significance of the position that you're running for impacts, that has a huge, yeah, potentially a huge impact yes. on us. Um, it's, it's had a significant impact and the ratepayers of Clark County have paid significantly more than they would have if, if the commission had not made that decision. Okay, wind power. Uh, is this involved? I mean, you, you, we've got, if 60% comes from BPA, is the, are the wind turbines part of BPA? Now, we, we have a contract with a wind developer for about 17 megawatts of wind, and basically... Out of how much? What's the total amount that we, that we buy? 
uh, how much uh, peak power is about a thousand megawatts average. So uh, seventeen uh, uh, megawatts from wind is a tiny fraction out of that thousand. Yeah, but it's 1. very seven percent. It's very expensive power, and uh, uh, it's basically forced on the utility by I nine thirty seven and uh, the, the initiative that was there to encourage renewables. I'm, I personally am in favor of renewables if they're cost competitive. But I, and I don't think, given the fact that our rates are already among the highest in the region, I don't want to see us be per, uh, investing or purchasing power that costs more than our current costs. Sure, so as I see it, we have three basic sources of power. We've got the renewable, uh, which is the hydropower, which is from facilities that are already made that are basically not burning any fuel, not producing any greenhouse gases or any of that, which is the lowest cost source of power. But because of politics, because of I-960, that is not considered to be renewable. That's right. And so we built this other plant that uses fuel that does, does add to greenhouse gases. That is much, which is more expensive. How about how much more expensive is it compared to? Well, right now it's about twice the cost okay. of uh, so, uh, Bonneville. So we created a, a, another source for twice the, the price, and then we created another source of wind power. And how much does that cost compared that's a, to that? That's about three times, three, three or four times. times Bonneville's rate. Three or four times, and why? Uh, where's the logic in that? I mean, if you already start out with renewable all the power you could possibly want. That's what we originally started with mm -hmm. before we decided to do the, go down these other two roads. Well, isn't I mean, that steady? It's reliable, it's easy to control, it's low cost. What more would you want other than if, if somebody blew up the, the dams or something, you know, the terrorist attack or something, uh, you have an alternative which, which, yeah. is, which is advantage. So there's, there's some sense behind having a, a backup power source, but does wind power make sense compared to that? The only argument for it is that it does reduce our use of fossil fuels. Well, so but, does hydropower, but, right? Uh, well, hy zero, hy right? hydro should be considered renewable. If we could count the federal hydro, the Northwest would have more renewables by a huge margin over the rest of the country. Okay, contrast for me uh, with the difference in the issues or the difference in the priorities that, between the two candidates. Uh, Julia Anderson, Julie Anderson, and yourself. How do you view these issues we're talking about? I, I think the the major difference between us is that she's not technically qualified. She doesn't have a technical background. Her background is acting as a financial editor for the Columbian most of her career. Okay. And uh, I have a strong technical background, both educationally and experience-wise, mm -hmm. and I I believe that one com at least one commissioner on that commission should have technical background in order to ask the right technical questions of the staff, and I think more importantly to evaluate the answers, and make sure that staff is doing the right thing that that keeps our rates stable and affordable. Mm -hmm. So technical-wise, I can imagine an engineering kind of background. You 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 uh, what did you, what do you do by trade? What was your what well, I, I'm an electrical engineer. I got my uh, bachelor's of science degree from Washington State in electrical engineering, a master of science in electrical engineering from Texas A&M, and uh, later got a master of science in management from Stanford. And I had jobs at, Pacific, I worked for Pacific Gas and Electric in San Francisco for 31 years. And uh, I had uh, jobs including manager of transmission planning and manager of power control and I, a, a stint for about 18 months as assistant to president. So I had a range of experiences in, a, in, in the largest uh, private utility in the United States. Okay, so that technical background that you have, I can imagine that, that, that's, that is an asset. It sounds like the, the direction that we've gone here, these policies, these basic ones, were primarily economical and practical. Uh, uh, the, in, in those areas, what are the contrasts between uh, between the two of you? I know you can't really speak for, for Julie, but you know you must know how you differ on, on issues or, or priorities. Well, I think one of the one of the problems I see is if you have three commissioners who have no technical background, uh, you may buy into arguments of staff that are not necessarily the best thing for the ratepayers. Okay. You need, you know, the, the the PUD has an excellent staff. They've got excellent people. But uh, you, in any organization like this, the, 
there's a tendency for the staff to give, the, you know, to, to use the commissioners to get what they want. And that it's not necessarily always in the interest of the ratepayers. I think you need a commissioner that, at least, uh, commissioners that uh, are a bit skeptical and will ask strong, hard questions of the staff, make sure that the staff arguments are valid. Mm -hmm. Okay. It sounds like from the, the history that we've discussed here and the, the, the practical policies and decisions that affect those, that uh, just about everybody would be on the same page. I mean, citizens uh, and both commissioners, uh, is that the case with you and, well, and Julie? Um, I'm, sh I'm sure that, uh, that uh, in, in the many cases we might make the same decisions. I think in the area of technical decisions, I suspect we'd make different decisions that, uh, because she doesn't have the background to evaluate the merits of, of the alternatives, technical alternatives. Okay, is it fair to say that the primary difference between you two is the technical? Yes. And, but in other areas, you're, 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 you're well, comparable. Yes, I mean, I've had management experience. Uh, I've uh, done budgeting for uh, large departments in, in a big utility. Um, I've done economic analysis. So I, I think I can handle as well as she would all of the other, other aspects of the commissioner. What I add to the mix is the technical background. Okay, good. Uh, in addition to the normal duties that, that uh, fall to a commissioner, uh, do you, will you be, or is it appropriate for a commissioner to be trying to influence these other areas, like the BPA, uh, we've got 500 KVA, or KV lines that are being mm -hmm. discussed going through Clark County. A lot of people feel strongly about that. Are you getting involved in any of that? Uh, the, basically, what the, the staff and the commissioners have said is they agree with BPA that the line is needed, and I, I, I happen to agree with that. So the issue is who's going to be impacted by it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, uh, really, I think the, the PUD could speak out on that standpoint. I, just like a lot of politicians, they've been reluctant to do so because you're going to make ratepayers, somebody in the county, mad at you if you, uh, if you promote one path over another. Well, that's the uh, welcome to the online, to the uh, political world, right? Yes. There's always going to be somebody on one side of the fence, and uh, which is very important. When it, should I say that makes the process that we go through very important that people at least know that's a fair process, yes. that they're listened to, that they're included in that in that debate. That brings up one uh, uh, question, and that is an area of what we call coordination. Coordination sounds, it, it means more in this, when it comes to the uh, governing world than it does just simply with just the natural definition of the word. Coordination, as I understand it, is a kind of like a trump card that any entity, however small, could be the cemetery district, can play and say, law, federal law requires you to sit down with me, federal government, as peers and for us to, to be able to talk on the same wavelength and you don't have authority over me in this setting so that we can ensure that we're being heard because we represent citizens, you have that obligation. Are you willing to do that? Um, are you familiar with the coordination, with, with, that, with that coordination term? Yes, I, you know, cooperation. Well, different, it's different than cooperation. Okay. It's, okay. Really a, it's really in a, an authority empowering tool mm -hmm. that not, not a lot of people know about it, but it is a resource that does help citizens and it does help commissioners, it does help any representative. Um, we have actually on Coov.com a, a interview that, that where I was informed yeah. about the process. So it is something that not everybody's going to know about it, but it is a very vi valuable tool. And I'm I bring that up because I'm, I'm, it, I'm curious to discover, and I don't know what the answer is at this point, if that is a tool that can be invoked by the commissioners to sit down with BPA who, uh, regarding these 500 KVA lines, or 500 KV lines, these high, these huge towers that, that are going to yes. go somewhere through Clark County or through the Pearl uh, route. Right. Yeah. The, at this point, you're not involved in that. In well, I, I've, have, I've <laughs> gone to a lot of the meetings, and I, uh, uh, I'm acting as an advisor to one of the groups that's you know, I'm not advocating one route over another, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I have uh, 
I have attended all, uh, most of the meetings associated with it, and I think I understand the issues. Mm -hmm. So you're informed, and in, in, like most citizens, we're trying to be heard, but uh, maybe we can turn up the volume with that coordination. One tool. of the things that, about this process that I object to the most is the uh, Department of Natural Resources saying they don't want it going over their land. Mm -hmm. They're saying it's better to go over private property than over the state land. Uh, and uh, I think they're in a position, their arguments are that, well, it's going to reduce revenue to schools. They can negotiate an agreement with Bonneville that fully compensates them for any losses. And they can do that much better than private property owners could. Uh, in other words, your preferred answer, I mean, if, if everybody, if BPA was listen, what would your, your preferred, your ideal solution be that could be practical, that really could be done? I think going as far east as you can and going over... In the, uh, into the public land? Yes. You know, I've been saying that for some time, too, and I think, <laughs> why don't they do that? Uh, it's gonna, uh, the, you, the line you, gets longer. It's I've had, be I've had cost, a but. number of email exchanges with the uh, Peter Gomark, and he's, he just basically uh, says uh, he doesn't want it on, on DNR land, and that's it. Why not? Uh, it he, doesn't belong to him. It belongs to the public, right? <laughs> I know. I, know I, I, I don't understand that mentality. Oh, well, maybe it's our turf, your turf kind of thing, but remember, his turf yeah. is really the public turf. Yeah. Okay, well, if, uh, are there any other major uh, points you want to talk about, or you want to just simply uh, jump in to, to uh, talk directly to voters to wrap it up? Okay, we can wrap it up. Okay, all right. Then I invite you to go ahead and just talk directly to the to the voters, whatever you want to say to wrap it up there, Jim. Okay, well, the P, the PUD uh, now is, is made choices that have them operating a very complex uh, uh, natural gas and electric energy markets. And they've chosen to uh, take what's called a slice product from Bonneville, which now obligates them to match their load and generation on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. They've added staff to do that. They've contracted with a co company in Bellevue to help them manage that process. There's the potential for significant rate impacts if that's done poorly. Um, they also face new regulations, uh, reliability regulations from the federal government that could subject us to significant fines. And so I think it's important to have somebody on that commission that understands those issues and can evaluate the staff and uh, policies and set policies d dealing with that. And right now, the, the two setting commissioners have no technical background. My opponent has no technical background. I think it would be very wise for the ratepayers of Clark County to, to elect a commissioner that has the technical background to, to provide uh, that kind of review. Uh, and really, I think the voters have a choice. You have a choice between a commission with three commissioners who have no technical background and can't evaluate those issues, and a commission that has at least one commissioner who has technical background. Okay, and if people want to learn more about you, do you have a website? Yes, jim-malinowski.com. Can you spell that? <laughs> uh, the Malinowski is spelled M-A-L-I-N-O-W-S-K-I, jim-malinowski.com. Any other way to reach you, email or phone or anything you want to give? Uh, my email is uh, j.malinowski at i-triple-e.org, i-3-e's.org. And I, my phone number is 247-6404. Okay. All right. Thank you, Jim. Pleasure. Thank you.